we are working on a temp star and uh, this short cycling and it'll shut off uh, and it'll come back on and it'll shut off you hear the scroll plates in the compressor and uh, I'm gonna have to guess that it's a refrigerant problem <laughs> because of all this oil has dripped down here. And that's water probably where it's freezing because Tempstar puts their metering device for the outdoor unit right here. Uh, carrier product, ICP. So I'm guessing we're going to have a leak somewhere in here, so let's see what we come up with. Let's hook up to it and see what these pressures are. Even just for giggles, you know they're low. Get hooked up to it and see how low it is. And figure out what's leaking. <laughs> Looks to me Looks to me like somebody has replaced this at some point in time. All right, let me turn it back on. I had a phone call from one of my guys. So let's see what our pressures are doing, but it looks like somebody has replaced, somebody's replaced this valve. Oh boy, let's see what we got. It's 18 degrees the other morning and it's 60 degrees today. Go figure. Good old North Carolina weather. Yeah, it's going out on low pressure. Yep. So let me go grab a couple of things and we're going to uh, we'll go in here and see if we can figure out where this leak is. Okay, let's see what we can come up with. Like I said, that's a new fitting. You can see the discoloration in the older ones. Somebody has replaced this one at some point in time. And it appears that it may, if it's the fitting, I might be able to tighten it a little bit. I mean, that's the original line connection from the line set. So more than likely, it's not going to be here. I'm going to check it, but it just leads me to think that it's not a tight connection or something's going on with it but anyway we'll check it real quick and uh, I can't I could pump it down maybe shut that off take this apart but I don't have a vacuum pump with me Pull the vacuum on the lines back through the coil so probably charge it up and come back this leak detector to warm up come on there we go yeah Whoever put that in didn't didn't tighten that thing. Not getting anything under the cap. Let me make sure there's an O-ring inside this cap. And there is. Let's 
fairly dry. But It's leaking enough to show any soap bubbles. But we will find out. where the leak is. It was obvious with that oil stain right there. So I don't know how well you can see that mirror but right down and then that bottom edge of that nut, looking back in the mirror, there's real small bubbles that are feeding, feeding out right where that fitting connects. It's hard to get the right angle on it, but uh, I'm going to try tightening this thing. And then, probably just going to charge it up. And we'll quote all that out. but And then come back and check the pressures on it in about three weeks. And see if that makes a difference. Jesus, did you see that? See how easy that thing turned? It just, it just wasn't tightened. Just wasn't tightened, guys. I'll be daggone. Well, good. We don't have to come back. I'm going to tighten this thing. We have both of our screws in down here. Nope. Let me stick a screw in there. They only put one of the screws back. So if I go try to tighten that too much, this whole thing is going to start to turn. So let me get a screw in there. Oh gosh guys, the stuff you find, the stuff that you find. Mm. Anyway. Alright. Now let me see if I can get a good could turn on it. Yeah, guys, this thing's loose as all get out. Make sure I'm not twisting my pipe, putting my cigarette roll in it. Just doing a little bit at a time because I don't want this pipe to start to twist. And then I got a kink in the pipe. That ought to be good. So there you go. Let's get this thing charged up. Alright guys. So we are going to get this thing charged. Charged back up. Slide on some refrigerant in there. about half 
way empty. But that's just an example, guys. Of <laughs> when you do something, you got to be thorough and you got to check your work. That's got to be tight. That thing, I turned it three times. So whoever it was that replaced that, you just didn't didn't check it. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I would think there would have been a pressure test and a vacuum pulled. I don't know. Uh, maybe he thought it was tight and the vibration of the unit caused it to back off a little bit. I don't know. All right, guys. So we're getting this thing charged back up. And see what the pressures are right there. So I'm just throttling in. I've got my charging T down there using my using my probes. Refrigerant, obviously, right there. Throttle a little bit more in there. Get this thing up to about a 105 and a 340. But yeah, I don't know why Carrier and Tempstar and Comfort Taker, as I've heard it referred to, they put the pist they put a piston out here in this thing instead of just putting a TXV or a fitting inside they do this this crap uh, I mean that's a that's carrier 101 right there but when you replace one of these you gotta tighten it back or it's gonna leak so anyway guys that's about it for this one and I guess lesson learned here is always check your work make sure all your fittings are tight Make sure your caps are back on tight. Make sure you put refrigerant caps back on the unit. And make sure the O-ring seal is in the caps. It's just, it's, it's, it's heating and air 101. If it bolts off, it bolts back on, but you gotta tighten it. Anyway, guys, that's about all there is for this one. Pressures are starting to stabilize. And, uh, We'll see you on the next one.